Now let's look at the Aston by election that's this weekend in Victoria. This is, of course, prompted by the resignation of Alan Tudge. Matt Canavan, it seems like Peter Dutton's uh, lack of popularity in the seat is going to be a big issue. Albanese referred to it in question time today even. Um, you know, he, why do you think Dutton is such a, apparently, according to polling, a drag on the vote in Victoria? Well, I don't accept that for a second. Uh, I see the Labor Party has leaked some polling today about Peter Dutton. But, uh, and it's there I on the screen right now. How, yeah, there you go. And I think it was reported there at Sky too, another reason to tune in. But <laughs> I think, um, I think uh, it shows that Labor are a little bit worried about Peter Dutton to be leaking polling like this. Uh, they're obviously trying to take him down uh, because Peter puts up a fight. Uh, yeah, look, when you're an, an effective opposition leader is not usually very popular. Uh, Tony Abbott was not very popular, but he ultimately destroyed two Labor governments in quick succession. And uh, I think Peter can do the same because he stands and by well, his values and principles and Labor are clearly worried about him. So it, it doesn't surprise me at all uh, that opposition leaders like Peter don't have high personal ratings, but that doesn't necessarily always mean that you do not uh, get political success as we've seen in years past. Well, usually at a by-election, there is a swing away from the government. Jenna, it kind of seems like Labor is hopeful that it could actually win this very mm. Liberal seat that the Liberals managed to hold on to at the campaign, you know, where they did so poorly. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting, I think, on Saturday night when I think the minute that the polls close, everyone is going to be probably speculating not only on who will win the seat but what this means for the future of Peter Dutton as the leader of the Liberal Party. But it is really interesting, uh, just to kind of jump on what Matt said around Peter Dutton, I think uh, from what I've witnessed over the past couple of weeks and, you know, just within the past couple of months, I think he's got a touch of the Julia Gillards about him. When you see him, the way he conducts himself within the chamber, uh, he is incredibly... He knows procedure inside and out. Him and Albo seem to work quite well together because, again, they both know the procedures of the House. So, you know, back to front, being former managers of business in the House. But it, it will be interesting to see what the voters of Aston uh, suggest because the fact that pre-polling has been slow may indicate that things are looking good for uh, Ms Campbell there for the Liberal Party. But uh, it is interesting that Dutton really hasn't been on the hustings much, so that could, is also pretty telling, I think. Yeah. Now, I want to go look at this story about about uh, the impact of Labor's new climate change policy, the safeguard mechanism, the concessions that Labor did with the Greens. We heard the coal chiefs come out yesterday and I had an exclusive interview with a coal chief last night on my program and he actually said he might have to tear up his contract, his export contract uh, with Japan because in order to meet the emissions targets, he might not be able to, you know, produce enough coal to export mm, it. Mm. Uh, Matt Canavan, you know, we're also hearing, and I've just got this story here, we're also hearing from Japanese gas giant Inpex. Mm. They've also said that this might mean that Australia is an unreliable export partner. How worrying is this that we're hearing this both from Australia and Japan? It's a huge concern, should be a huge, huge concern for all Australians because when you think about our economic position right now, we're basically being bankrolled by the strength of our mining industry. Our budget is only really holding on uh, thanks to the record exports we're seeing from, from coal, from iron ore, from gas. And, and all of those exports are on the back of very large investments that companies like Inpex have made in the past. In fact, Inpex made the biggest investment by a Japanese country outside of Japan, anywhere in the world. It was made uh, in Darwin uh, to build their ICFAS LNG facility, $60 billion of investment in our nation. And that's paying off for us now because those gas exports generate revenue, jobs and taxes uh, for all Australians. But, of course, we won't get that revenue stream in the future unless more investments are made today. And effectively, what the government has done with the Greens and the Senate this week is to put a cap on our economic activity, put a cap on the amount of carbon emissions we have. That's what Adam Bank got. It's going to be a hard cap. Yeah. And so that's why the coal executive you, you interviewed said he may not be able to meet his production contracts, his contracts with those customers, because uh, once they get to that cap, you can't produce any more. Why would any government put a ceiling on our economic potential or opportunity? That has never happened in our history. And uh, this Labor government is 
has passed something here which will restrain our Australian economy when we should be shooting for the stars. Yeah, uh, that, that was Nick Jaws from Bowen Coking Coal. And it's very difficult, Jenna, because any businessman wants to grow their business. But when you've got mm. a cap and if that's come in, you know, they've been operational for four years, they had all these expansion plans, and he's now talking about having to scrap uh, the contracts he's got to export coal to Japan. Look, it's very, mm. it's very difficult to try and intervene in how businesses are run. Um, but, you know, this is ultimately what the Albanese government in those deals with the Green has done. We've seen the Prime Minister come out and say it's not going to affect um, Australia's exports. We will be a reliable export partner. But it seems like he can't really make that commitment. I think it's the, the great unknown. It will we, what will happen in the future? And I know no to sound that, not to sound vague, but I think that's true. When you speak, I think we're seeing you know Japanese companies saying that we don't know, think that Australia is a viable uh, infrastructure partner anymore. I think we're probably going to be seeing a number of other, uh, not only not only in the resources sector, but probably probably around, you know, superannuation funds and, and things like that, probably don't want to invest in Australia just because of the amount of government intervention. Mm. 